Pilgrims, and welcome to another episode of the Polygon Pilgrimage. And today, I wanted to share with you some experimentation that I've been doing, and a couple notes here that I don't think a lot of people are aware of. So, in speaking with some of my mentors, I mentioned that I use the Cartesian to Polar and Polar to Cartesian nodes, and actually one of them said, what are those? So, I wanted to do some experimentation. So, what I've been doing is I've been taking each of these Specifically, I've been working with the Cartesian to Polar, because Polar, you already need something Polar, and I'm trying to create Polar effects using Cartesian, which is a flat, think of it like a map that you see on most walls in classrooms. That's a Cartesian map, and then a Polar map is more of the curved lines when it's cut into those, like when you unwrap a, a sphere and you have these points, because it's been cut into these uh, orange slices kind of look to it. That's a polar map stretched out to be more Cartesian, but then a full Cartesian is, you know, the rectangular shape we're used to. So using both of these nodes, I've been taking every single standard node and just throwing it into these two and coming out with what are the interesting results. So you never know what you can achieve using just two nodes, and the power behind these is amazing, and just using it to your advantage. So I started at the top here, and literally all I did was I went to the very top here and said one at a time. You can see here, this here, this there, two, three, just started working my way down the list. And I have these two nodes and I've been moving them along and anytime there's something really interesting, I leave a copy here behind. Now not to say that all of these are not interesting, you, there's different effects, but first let's maybe let me show you what happens when you use this. So I'm going to make a copy of this Cartesian to Polar. Move it up here. Okay, there we go. All right, you are fine right there, and I'm going to unhook that. This does have to be a gradient map for the input. From here, gradient has to get converted to a color. So here we go. Now I have my Cartesian to Polar, and I'll show you what it does. So if I put in a straight map, so say something like this, checkers, I'm going to drag that over and plug it in. Look what happens. It's taking the whole thing and rounding it, taking each corner and bending it around and connecting the two ends together and making this perfect loop. So if this is something you were looking for, this is a great effect too. Uh, almost reminds me of the nuclear symbol or the radiation symbol. Very much similar to that. And now you can still go back to your original node and affect things like the tiling. So if this is more like the old school TV, the way they used to do for the adjustment for the image. Or you can really scale it up and get something pretty crazy. Very uh, Escher, very uh, fun house kind of look to it there. So that's basically what the node does. So now let's talk about some of the interesting effects that I've come up with. I say come up with. There are combinations that I've found. So, working my way down the list, when I got into the D's, I got to the directional noise. So here's what it normally looks like. It doesn't really have any parameters. You have a random seed here to change it. I've actually used this in a previous episode when we did a interact, uh, signal interference, like an interrupted signal kind of effect by animating this random seed. You see how it looks like that old school TV snow. So by putting that into the Cartesian to Polar, it obviously rounds it out, and this would be fantastic for knots and wood. Now obviously there is a wood fibers as well, and if you put that in, you get some pretty good results too. Not so much right in the center due to this like extreme pinching, but if you were to say mask out a ring, so where like a donut, where the center you don't want to mask, and you take a section. You could kind of combine these two things and then a little bit of directional warping to make these not quite perfectly circular and there you go you've got some great wood knots some nice grain and then multiply over top of that your color uh, give a little bit of variance in there so these are two fantastic options for creating some knots in wood so again this is the directional noise and then this is the wood fibers one so obviously this is wood fiber, so it's designed to be kind of wood-like, and this is really good. I've used this for the ends of wood where it gets cut off. And you have a disorder here. So if I highlight this guy, but then I go here and start affecting the disorder, you can see what we get here. Almost like a quicksand effect or an expanding effect. So this is good too for, uh, I have a couple of these. I tended to gravitate towards some sci-fi type effects. But, you know, if that's what it leads me to, that's what I'm going to follow. So, if you were to animate this programmatically, you can see here you get this expanding effect. So, if you were to combine this with a really quick zoom in on the texture for an effect, maybe like a quick teleport effect, there you go, you've got that too. Or you could go the other way. Say you needed like a, a sand, um, sand trap, like a, 
sinking sand kind of thing. Here you go, just slowly animate it into the negative value over time, and, and you can go well beyond this. So you can go to the negative values and just add infinitum. You can just keep going, and this would be a great little effect. So that's pretty cool. We got a lot out of just two nodes. We got wood, wood in different ways, like the knots in wood. You could use these or these for the actual lengthy fibers. We could interrupt it, even distort it with these. So you distort it with itself, processed through a Cartesian to polar node. So you can create all kinds of things from just there. So let's move on. Uh, here's a good one. If you throw your dirt three into this, it tends to be rather circular, obviously. This is great for a sci-fi effect. And I have an image here. Here we go. Uh, this image is some of my experimentations. Okay. Sorry about that, we had a little bit of a hiccup with the recording software there and my image actually crashed. But what I was saying is, if you take the dirt node here and throw it into the Cartesian to polar, then what you get is this really nice effect that if you zoom in quickly on the texture, you get this really light speed type effect. And that's really awesome. So that's something to consider as well. Another good space effect. This one I called Almost Moon. <laughs> if you take the gradient dirt and throw it in, look what you get. It's almost like a moon, but then there's this hole in the center. I don't know, maybe that would be useful to you. Maybe you want these just outer edges. Uh, maybe put an eye in the center and use this as a really creepy eye. Uh, you could do that too, but that's just, you know, really interesting effect that comes from experimenting with every single node. All right, here we go. So these are two that I thought would be really good for architectural stuff. I've been getting into uh, modeling this uh, mansion and if you look at the fibers node here and you throw it into Cartesian, this center circular part would be really cool for some architectural uh, scroll work. I'm specifically thinking like a cap on something or the very pinnacle or right in the center of a circular area, you put this. And then taking the fibers too, using the same thing, look at this center little thing. This almost reminds me when they're decorating a cake and they do that final little dot and pull the pull the uh, thing away and it makes a little Hershey's Kiss type shape. So this masked over top of the center of this, you get this double nub kind of effect. These would be some really cool architectural designs. Or if you happen to need circular rope for whatever reason, here's how you make circular rope, you know? And so you get a couple of things out of two really simple nodes. Okay, on to the next one here. This is our energy nexus. And this is created by taking the fur one and throwing it in. And look at this crazy pattern you get in here. This is so cool. And it's made even cooler because I can alter the disorder. And look at this. Look at how cool that is. Now imagine if you colorize this, if you put a little bit of uh, emissive texture to it, and then maybe we feather out the edges. If you put that onto a particle in the center of a particle field and just have it sitting there as this energy nexus, just an awesome looking effect. Even better would be if you then have this, but say let's speed it up. It's a little hard to see on the recording here, super sped up like that. But if you were to speed it up and then shoot it out as, as a projectile and have you know just energy wisping off of it. So really cool complex energy effect here with all kinds of overlapping, you know, this would be difficult to create or animate using individual elements but the disorder as part of this fur one makes it really easy and all we have to do is reach into our parameters like we can do now some of the brand new nodes with su uh, substance six here are not supported in things like unity yet but these are old nodes which are supported so we can definitely reach into here sorry like this and animate these these properties pretty easily so all right moving on that one's really cool i like it a lot now we got some gradient nodes just sitting out there okay this one I called Alien Eye. So same kind of thing, I took this and you throw it in and this center part would be really cool for like an eye if you wanted to get some, some strange bug-like creature or something. And again, we can play with the tiling here and we can get all kinds of effects. It starts to look almost floral at a point like that. And then you get this uh, really crazy, you gotta make sure eyes hurt looking at something like that. But you can get all kinds of effects from the same two nodes and just changing simple parameters. So that would be good for an eye. Uh, we got a couple more. So here's our neural membrane. And what we've got here is this is our Grunge Map 005 and it has a couple of things. This brush pattern is one. And I've found that if you just put it in straight, you get this really cool looking thing. This reminds me of 
I don't know, somehow some parts of inside of the body, different membranes and things connected to one another. And if I look at the uh, brush pattern here, you start to get this strange Pac-Man opening his mouth kind of effect to wipe it away. But if we don't use that and we just keep it solid, you get this pretty cool effect. And you do have a disorder as well to mess with, and it's not quite doing a lot like it does with the others. And then of course your balance and contrast to change your colors, you can make it really bright. You can you know, lower that, you can get rid of some of the background membranes. So using this in, in a combination of ways, you could probably create some pretty interesting internal mass type things. You know, if you're looking at a on the atomic or microscopic scale, there's a lot of possibilities here with some of these simple parameters and then just combining it with itself in different ways. You know, never doubt that you can do combinations of the same thing with itself. You know, you can build on the effect. So that's pretty cool. All right, we got two left. So here we have um, an explosion effect using the Grunge Map 006. This guy's pretty cool, and if I just throw him straight over, look what you get. This center mass here is perfect for a quick particle explosion. You could even scale it up really fast, and boom, put some color to it. And if I go back to the operations here, the pattern again does the Pac-Man thing, so I'm not really going to mess with that too much because it sort of ruins it. But we do have our balance and everything, so we can lower that or maybe even animate that up pretty quickly. That'd be pretty cool. Animate that up to emphasize the explosion. And you have your contrast and sort of lower or heighten as you see fit to get more or less detail. And here you can even get something, again, that looks sort of wood-like or with a green to it by lowering the contrast quite a bit. You can see here you can get these ring, concentric rings. So all kinds of possibilities with that. Again, uh, I liked the um, the explosion look. It just kind of made me made me laugh when I saw it. I said, "This definitely looks like an old school explosion with all these energy lines kicking out and uh, different waves." I can imagine cutting this out with a feathered circle and then putting it on three different planes um, to a particle, and that would look pretty cool. And again, this is the kind of thing that would only exist for a brief moment in, in time. You wouldn't have this sitting there static unless you wanted to use it as part of an image of an explosion for some reason. Okay. And on to our last one for now. Uh, this is one I found has another great possibilities from a really simple node. So here's our scratches one, which is pretty simple in, in and of itself. But then thrown into the Cartesian dipolar, you get this really cool swirling vortex. And even cooler is these operations here are fantastic. So you have your rotation, which is, you know, I like to keep it just pretty simple. Uh, if you move it too much, you get uh, different effects you'll get these lines that they either line up with each other, something more like that. And then when you do the disorder, it sort of comes in on itself or out. That's still pretty cool. But I like to set it all the way to one side so then you get these perfectly curving inward things. And now when I move the disorder, you see I get this outward swirling effect. And this would be perfect to layer over top of some of the other ones that we've done. So this is a good swirling effect here. The rotation variation, it starts to get kind of hairy, literally, if you do it too much. So again, uh, see, it just starts to get all over the place. Which, if that's what you're going for, then okay, sure, you know, you could do different things with it. But I like to keep it at zero, so then we have this uh, nice swirling vortex. Then, if that wasn't enough, <laughs> we have uh, the pattern size width and pattern size height. And these determine, this determines the length of the lines and almost how much they sort of grow bold and long and then the width is the width of the lines as we go across. You get a very different looking thing just by just by raising this a little bit. Look, I went from about 200 to 440 and look, it looks totally different. And now again, if I use the, uh, the effect here, you can see that's looking pretty cool. Uh, again, you can go pretty far with this too. I did experiment that if you go almost to the end, I was in this range, maybe I went all the way to the end there and then I made these, yeah sort of get like a stylized effect out of this too, you know? Or if you just wanted a few lines now and maybe animate these with a color, if you invert this and then colorize this and then make this disorder go at a lower or faster rate than if you do this with the 440 and lower this and you colorize this guy and maybe make him go slower or faster, then combining those two, you'd get an amazing effect from this. So. 
I think I'm going to play with some of these and see if I can overlay some things and make some pretty awesome particle effects using just, you know, simple nodes over and over again that are just combined on top of one another. They're very simple. It's a, it's a pretty easy thing. And, you know, this is just one example of a, of a type of node that most people don't know about. You know, we've only been talking about the Cartesian to polar, really, but the polar to Cartesian does the other way around. Obviously, for most of these, it will sort of reset what the original looked like because we're just directly undoing the operation, or we're doing the inverse, we're not undoing. Uh, but you can take things that were never meant to be thrown into that and, you know, connect things up and you start to get a lot of this type of effect, this triple or double arch type effect because of the way that it skews things. But you never know. You take this and you skew it and then, you know, experiment. Let's throw it back into here and see what we get. Come on, generate. So you get mostly of your same effect, but then the outer edges tend to get messed up and you get this weird porthole looking thing. But, you know, that's what we do. We experiment. We look for new tricks and tips and new things that nobody thought to do before. And then you end up with crazy stuff like this using pretty simple tools. And this is just one of literally so many nodes. So many nodes that we have operations to. All of these in here, there's so many to go through and see what kind of hidden aspects they have. And you never know what you're going to find when you just kind of play a little bit and see what comes up. So I encourage you guys, if you have any uh, nodes that are some of your favorites that it's a really simple, you know, dirty little trick to create some awesome effect that is really cheap and easy to do, please, you know, share it with me, share it with the group. Let's make sure that everybody kind of learns and has all these tricks up their sleeves. Uh, here's another couple ones, sorry, that are they're pretty good. Like if we do this, you get that. And then if you do this, tiling. Get some pretty crazy stuff going on. See, you know, all kinds of things. So again, sorry, uh, it's just so exciting. I like to play with all this stuff. Uh, you know, keep sharing, guys. Keep learning. If you have some tips and tricks, please send them in. Let me know. Let's let the community know. And let's all grow from this experience and make sure that we're all as best as we can be. That's the, the goal always. So as always, guys, until next time, keep practicing, get better, and I'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.